This, this is um, fairly typical of a wetland soil. It's Most of us would of simply call this really mud, but this dark, messy, sloshy soil is as good as gold in the arid southwest. To wetland biologists like Dr. Jim Allen, the executive director of Northern Arizona University's School of Forestry, a soggy, mucky meadow is an indicator of forest health. You can imagine, you know, acres and acres of this, five, six, ten feet deep before you get to bedrock, how much water might be stored in a wet meadow and gradually released downstream over time. This spongy spring-fed meadow is keeping plants and animals well watered. There used to be a lot of these, but not anymore. The very first explorers, the very first pioneers coming through here, they would have moved through an area that had very open forests in the uplands right above us here, and then they would have come through one meadow after another as they work their way, say, from east to west across northern Arizona. Now, deeply eroded gullies quickly whisk water away. Dry meadows carry only memories of old stream channels. And scientists like NAU's Dr. Abe Springer say our overcrowded pine forests are draining our wetlands. If we return the forest density to a, uh, a more pre-settlement condition with a more natural fire regime, most of our indicators and studies show that we should modestly increase the amount of surface runoff and increase the amount of recharge to the aquifers by decreasing the amount of water that the trees and the vegetation uses and returns to the atmosphere. By thinning the forest, rebuilding shallow streams, and reducing the impact of grazing animals, researchers like Carissa Ramstead are confident we can return the wet to wetlands. You want to see more graminoids, which graminoids means grass species, uh, more highly on the sedges and rushes. They help stabilize banks banks that are buzzing with activity and oozing with organically rich potential. For Inside NAU, I'm Bonnie Stevens with the Ecological Restoration Institute.